Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be refreshing the cooling system components of my 2004 Chevrolet SSR pickup with a 5.3 liter LM4 V8. The LS2 6 liter engine has the same cooling system components, so this should apply to all model years of 2003 to 2006 of the Chevrolet SSR pickup. Let me interrupt myself for just a moment here. There are a large number of sections in this video. If there's a particular section you wish to focus on, look at the time index on this panel or the following panel, or check down in the video description section for clickable links to go to that particular portion of the video. And I apologize, I did use an incorrect term during the filming of this video for the surge tank. So you'll hear a kind of odd replacement of surge tank throughout the video. Sorry about that, but back to myself. What I'm gonna be replacing are the following. The upper and lower radi lower and upper radiator hoses. These are some AC Delco professional replacement hoses. No clamps on these from the new ones. Uh, so I'll be transferring over the clamps from the existing parts. The heater core hoses that go from the water pump up to the firewall. This isn't available from AC Delco or GM any longer. So this is actually sourced from simple-engineering.com. Mike at Simple Engineering put a lot of time, effort, I'm sure money into getting these produced as an aftermarket quality replacement part for the SSR community. So I'll be swapping those out. There's no sense in doing the radiator hoses and not doing these at the same time. A, uh, the pressure in the cooling system will find the weakest point to create a leak. So I'm gonna swap all the major hoses in the system out. And I'm also replacing the surge tank in the SSR with a new one. This is a Dorman aftermarket product. The reason I'm, I've selected this one, one, it's a um, part of the pressurized system. So because the vehicle is 16, almost 17 years old, it's just like the other parts are getting older. But the reason for the Dorman product is the plastic is a little bit more clear as far as the visibility of the coolant within the tank. Mike at Simple Engineering suggested that I do that and he sent me a picture of his SSR and the orange color of the Dex Cool coolant can very easily be seen in this particular uh, tank. So I'm replacing the one that I have, the AC Delco one with this one. Don't forget about this little rubber foot on the bottom because they easily drop out. So when you pull up your existing one, if you're retaining it or not, uh, make sure that you don't lose that rubber foot underneath the tank because it will bang up against the metal. Plastic will hit the metal and create some unusual noises there. The uh, tank comes with a new cap and new O-ring there. And I'll be coming back to this in a moment about the tool I'm using for the leak testing and quick filling of the system. I'm also replacing the thermostat and I purchased a, a housing and thermostat together along with a new gasket, the O-ring here. And the reason I'm doing that is the housing that attaches to the water pump with the lower radiator hose connected to it. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any pitting or scarring of any sort on this. Probably isn't, but I just want to make sure I didn't run into a situation where I came across that and then I needed to go find one of these at the last moment. Plus this was pretty cheap overall. So might as well get it all together. So I'll just quick and easy replace the one that's on the water pump. Of course, I will also be using gloves and glasses to pre protect myself, make sure I don't get anything in my eye or have any direct contact with the uh, coolant removed from the system. And any old coolant that you drain out of the system or contaminated water that you generate from flushing the system, make sure you dispose of that at, with the appropriate measures for your area for hazardous waste. I will be doing that with the coolant that I removed the, from this system in this vehicle. And now the tool that I'll be using is this particular tool here. It's an airlift tool, which will use vacuum to leak check the system and also to quick fill the system. And some people might say, well, wait a minute, isn't that gonna collapse the hoses? Yes, it will. But your hoses, be it new, or as long as they're in good condition, there's no reason that a vacuum can't be applied to them. Many service departments use this approach to leak check and quick fill their system. So I thought I'd give it a shot myself. This particular tool has two different uh, connections to it. One is you connect this to the tool and you put the uh, quick connect connector for your air compressor hose to it and then connect the hose. It run compressed air through this to generate a vacuum, which will generate a vacuum in the system because you'll be inserting this into the surge tank in the SSR in this particular case. And then this rubber piece, you'll screw this down to squish the rubber down, which will expand it. And then it'll create the seal in that area because you need to make sure that it generates a good seal. Otherwise you won't be able to generate the vacuum in, in the cooling system here. So that's how that gets installed there. But I'm going to take this back out to make it a little bit easier to handle on camera here. But the idea is you generate that vacuum in the system and then you close off the valve 
And then you get it, once you get it to the like 25 inches of vacuum, you leave it at that point. You can actually take this particular connection off at that point. And there shouldn't be any bleed off of the vacuum. So if the vacuum level goes down, then you know you have a leak in the system. And if you have a leak, you need to address it before you start filling the system. So this is a good leak detection tool. And then with the vacuum in the system, assuming there's no leaks, you then can attach the other part of this tool to it, which is going to put this end into a tank of your coolant, which is, in my case, I'm going to use 50-50 mix of Dexcool coolant. This has a screen on it to make sure it doesn't pick up any junk in the container. Hopefully you have no junk, it's a nice clean container for your coolant, but you push, put that down into the tank, then you connect this on the tool end of it, and if it was closed, then you open up this part, and then once you open up the valve again, the vacuum that you generated before will draw the coolant from the tank, the, the jug that you have the coolant in, up into the cooling system, and the vacuum will cause the coolant to come in and then any of the air pockets and everything will percolate out of the system because the vacuum will f completely fill the cooling system. And I've found that this is a very quick and efficient way to do it. Usually under two minutes, I've seen in most cases, we'll see how quick we can do it in the SSR. And, but you'll still need to check the coolant level after the vacuum has been completely dissipated. You'll notice that there's no more coolant being pulled in. At that point, you'll turn it off, you know, dis disengage it from the surge tank here and then you'll do your regular fluid level checks and then still ch run and check the engine for making sure that the coolant level stays where it's supposed to, but with the brand new dormant tank in there, it'd be much easier to do so. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in this particular video and hopefully the parts and tools that I'm using will be helpful to you. And if you do find the information helpful to you, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Why not? It's free. And hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos to the channel. And if you'd like to find out and use some of the parts and tools that I have here, check the description section down below the video. I'll have links to these products and most of those will be affiliate links where I do make a commission if you purchase those products and most of them being Amazon links probably. They'll end up being where if you buy those products or any other products within a 24 hour period of clicking on those links, I will receive a commission that will help support the channel's efforts. And if you wanna make a one-time donation, check out the PayPal link in the description section. And if you wanna become an ongoing supporter, a patron of the company, you can go to patreon.com and look at the link down in the description section for that, where you can become a supporter at one, two, or five dollars a month. Any amount helps at this point, so check that out if you like the content here. So let's move on and get the first thing done, which is draining the cooling system. I'm going to begin the draining of the cooling system. I have already removed the cap from the surge tank over here so this is going to allow air into the system and i apologize if there's a noise in the background i do have a fan running because it is quite warm here and i'm trying to keep it as cool as possible in the garage while i'm doing this but i've got the top off the surge tank and now i'm going to go below and open up the drain in the radiator to start draining out the coolant and let's get get going to that the drain for the radiator is located on the passenger side lower section, as you can see here. The drain plug is located at the very base there. You turn it counterclockwise when you're facing it to remove it. You can fully remove it, but I decided to leave it in so I didn't have any extra flowing out from that. When you reinstall it, make sure you screw it in gently and tighten by hand. I actually had to use a needle nose pliers to loosen it gently uh, to get it out this time, but make sure you hand tighten the drain plug when you reinstall it at the end. While the radiator is draining, I'm going to remove the upper air box area here so I have more visibility into this for you as well. So first off, I'm going to release the Phillips screws here. I'm going to disconnect the mass airflow sensor connection. Move the gray connector away to unlock it. And then disengage it. Release the clamp at the throttle body. I'm going to take the upper hose off the shelf on the back side. Tilt this out and up and out of the way. I'm 
I'm going to remove the clamps on the upper radiator hose to get uh, that opened up because the coolant has drained out. It pretty much stopped at the bottom of the radiator. But uh, this should open up the cooling system a bit more. And now we're going to go over here, down on the radiator side here, there's a clamp similar to that over here. I don't want to put too much pressure on this. Uh, see what, what we can do here to get this plier in, in here. So that's the upper radiator hose. See if we can twist this just a little bit, disengage it. Otherwise, we'll have to get one of the little thick tools in here. You want to pull into the hose, not to the metal. Let's see if that's enough to break it free. There we go. So that's the original upper radiator hose. And I'm going to transfer the clamps over to the new one. So this is the position that it was in. So the corresponding position for the new hose is this way. So I'm going to transfer over the clamp that was over here. Do this now while we know what position it was in on the hose. And let's do the same over here. See if we can get this all the way off. Even locked into position would be great. Okay, it's locked into position. We should be able to remove this. So the old hose is off. And the clamps going onto the new hose. So we have those in place, ready to go on. Given the access point for the thermostat and everything, I'm going to take the drive belt off. And I'm going to remember, position this in the, where I'm storing it, so that this is the front of the engine, so we put it back in the same rotational direction. Now visually, you might benefit from me removing this. So I will do that right now. Well, it looks like I'm going to leave that out because, again, better visibility. But we're going to note the position because we have two longer bolts and then the shorter bolt for that. So I'll just store it off on the side with the bolts in their corresponding positions. All right, so we have the thermostat housing uh, and lower radiator hose which of course we have another one of these fun little clamps. And uh, then there's a corresponding one up on the top of the radiator. So I'm gonna have to move some cameras around here to get a better view of that. I'm gonna leave this on for the moment and we're probably gonna get a bunch of fluid out of here. So that probably means I should also remove the uh, air conditioning uh, dry belt, which I kind of missed that before. Same principle here. Release the tension and take the belt off. Pulley. At least let's get her off the tensioner pulley. I can't get it to the point with that extension on there due to the transmission line, so let me just try it with the ratchet head here. All right, that dry belt is out, and I'll orient that as I did the other one to make sure I put it on the same direction. I have the plastic there, so I know I'm going to get some coolant out of here because of the thermostat. 
So I'm going to let that drain down the plastic and then down into the pan. But let's try to get that radiator hose off now. Can we get it into the locked position? Not where the pliers are at this point. Okay, well. Let's see if I can lock this off at least a little bit here. So let me get the pick to pry up the edge of the hose. You don't want to rub it against the metal, just get underneath the hose and pry it up a little bit. Try to move these pliers to move the clamp down further. There we go. Get it off the expansion point right here. And I'm gonna release these pliers to get them out of the way. There we go, it's fully released. So let's see if we get any coolant out of this. No? All right, let's try to get that bottom section off. Looks like it's coming off now. There we go. So we're we transferring the two clamps over to the new hose. I'm gonna spray some brake bar cleaner here just to get the dirt and everything off of here before I open this up. Well ventilated area. And we've got a couple of hoses we need to remove over here as well for the uh, heater core hoses. So get that area. And any coolant that's trapped behind the thermostat should drain down the plastic and into the pan below. These first, check with this. Right. Plastics in place to hopefully divert any coolant. Second bolt. They appear to be the same length and thread and everything, so shouldn't matter which one they go in now. So let's see if we can, we can feel the gasket with the thermostat. So let's try to break that free. And there's some coolant, which I expected. Of course, this is a cool engine. Some would say to run the engine, get the thermostat open to let it drain out more. Uh, then you've got hot coolant to deal with and hot hoses and engines, so I'd rather take this approach. And this is the original style thermostat with the holes here. Actually, this looks far better than the one I took out on another SSR a few months ago. We've got this hole. Sorry, that was the other camera turning off. Uh, we have a whole new assembly, which I showed you in the intro segment to replace this. We just need to clean all this up here before we put the new one on. And now we have the clamps for the uh, heater core hoses over here. So I'm going to use my pliers to loosen those and engage the little clips here. That should help in removing those. And we'll try to get 
transfer those over to the replacement hoses. Of course, these particular hoses, the, the nipples that they're going on here on the water pump are not being replaced, so that we have to be uh, careful with those because we can't mar those up. Because there's a zip tie of the hoses to this front pole of the surge tank. So, that. Okay, there we go. Got that one broken loose. And let's see what we get out of this one. Just a little bit. Should have been draining into here anyway. And that looks nice and clean, no marring. So the water pump connections for the upper, the thermostat housing to the lower and the heater core uh, are all taken off. And as I mentioned on my Caprice, I have a pulley that's got play slop in it. This one does not, so I'm gonna leave the water pump in place. Now let's get that surge tank and heater core hoses out of the way. I'm now gonna remove the heater core hose assembly to hose to the surge tank and the two hoses up here I've actually replaced these just last year so I'm not replacing them at this point in time so they're in good shape uh, and I'm going to get my little pliers to do that hopefully we can get that uh, taken off easily the rear hose here goes to the throttle body warmer on the 0304 there's a hose that goes up to the throttle body and through it and then back over to the block it looks like. So this one goes to the throttle body and then this one goes up into the top of the radiator. So radiator, throttle body. On to the main part of the hose. And now we should be able to wiggle these off. Again, this goes to the radiator, and this one goes to the throttle body. I don't want to get too aggressive because this, this is plastic. It does have reinforcements at the tip at least, but this is still just plastic here. Front this up by the throttle body. I'm going to take this overflow tube, which tends to get in... Well, Put it up to the side like that for now. We have another clamp here for the large hose coming in. This is one of the design changes as far as the hose. Life spent is what goes up into here. There's a short, it actually comes up from here into the surge tank. So it's a little bit different design, but uh, the clamp should be the same. And I'm gonna put a little bag underneath that just to capture any coolant that might drop down. Yeah, I know it's not the biggest deal if it drops, but uh, I'd rather not have to clean stuff off, coolant off of things, or have that coolant smell after I start things up. In theory, we've already drained that out of that hose, but there shouldn't be anything, but just in case there's any residual. Get that off the nipple. Transfer that over once we have it out. Okay, so hopefully we can wiggle this off. It's coming off. And let's see what we get out of it. Nothing, which is what I expected, but I'd rather have the something to catch it underneath it just in case. So the uh, things that are holding this in now are this bolt and it's kind of tied in this bracket. I have mangled this bracket at some point to give a better grip on this but we'll see if we have to adjust that. And then we have to watch out for that footer rubber piece 
uh, underneath it so we don't drop it. And then we should be able to pull this out. If I recall correctly, this is a 10 millimeter bolt holding it in the front. Right here. to do any adjustments now. Okay, it comes out. And hopefully, we just pull it out. And as you can see, the rubber foot is not there, it's over here. So we got that. And it's good to note at this point, there is a, I believe, a level sensor in that uh, tank and it's not connected on the SSR to anything. So uh, there's nothing to disconnect at this point in time. So the last thing I believe on the hoses we're replacing is the quick connect disconnects up there at the firewall. So I'm going to reposition everything so you can see that with the cameras and get those taken out. I'm now going to disconnect the heater hose connections at the firewall with using the quick disconnects here. And in theory, there's those two plastic tabs on each side that I need to depress. And doing that should release the hose. And it does. And that lets some air into there. And luckily I have the uh, bag up in front here to flow that into the tank that I'm, I have down there. So that one's off. And we'll replace, pull that off in just a moment. We'll do that for the second hose here. Reach in with two fingers here, both hands. There we go. Second one, the Herm both snap on both sides. And it looks like the O-ring assembly came out with <laughs> Interesting. Yes, it did. Looks like I need to get a little uh, screwdriver or something to pry that up. So I can't seem to convince it to come up and over on both sides at the same time. Is this piece is provided with the new hose quick uh, connector. But we have an additional issue here where the actual O-rings stayed on the piping. For this one, so those are off. There we go. And again, we've got a new one on the new hoses. I ended up using a small flat blade screwdriver to pry up on the plastic and I first removed the O-rings over here on this one that were left behind from that hose and then just pry gently on the plastic, not on the piping, and pulled those off. Now that I have these removed and I reread the instructions from Simple Engineering, it gives you a stern caution about using a flat blade screwdriver, which is what you saw me use. And in my particular case, I used it to go underneath the plastic and pry up. I never touched the metal. So in that case, I didn't actually cause any damage, which is what the warning is from Simple Engineering to make sure that you don't use a flat blade screwdriver because it can mar up the surface here where the O-rings need to seal. So they su uh, might suggest that uh, a pair of uh, needle nose pliers be used to grab this and peel this off. So use that approach to be doubly safe. The approach I used ended up being okay because as I believe I say in that segment, I'm using it to just simply pry up on the plastic tab here. I was pulling up this way, and uh, but it ended up working out for me. But be sure you don't mar out the uh, metal on here because that's where your O-ring is going to seal where the quick connects. So now we're going to pull the hoses out. Since the only other thing holding them on is this little plastic connector 
on the valve cover stud, which it just pulls off. So then I have, but I have to move the camera to get it out of the way. All right, now I'm gonna pull the hoses out. There's this little plastic retainer that goes on the valve cover stud here. And we should have everything disconnected at this point. So I'm going to tip these a little bit more to make sure they drain out all the fluid before we pull them out. It appears to have been done. And the easiest path out appears to be up and out. But to do that, I'm going to have to remove the oil dipstick since that's going to get in the way. All right. It's, well, actually it looks like coming out this way is easiest. It's, but yes, the dipstick did need to come out to make that easier. And this retaining clip, which appears to be a zip tie style. Um, I think there's a different approach in the new hoses, which they clamp to one of the existing sh shocks uh, mounts here. So I don't believe that's going to be reused. But we will have to transfer over the clips, I'm sorry, the uh, clamps for the hoses. All right, I've cleaned the nipples off the water pump side for these new hoses, and I've removed the nut from the shock tower rear uh, mounting bolt stud uh, out of uh, the way so we can put the securing bracket over that. And these new hoses actually run over the AC lines in this manner, and then they'll snap on I've already pre-lubricated the O-rings per the directions to make sure that the O-rings have lubrication to smoothly be installed on the pipes from the firewall heater core. So I'm lining all this up and it looks like it's going to be okay, but uh, we need to get these hoses on here by the water pump. They are, they are different sizes, so there's no way to really mess that up. For placement purposes, I'm gonna install the hose right now per the instructions. So I'm gonna push on the rear one here without putting the clamp on quite yet. And hopefully from here, basically the two hoses here are going on the water pump end. So those are fully pressed on. And then the hose here seems to be positioned appropriately. The bracket for the uh, hoses seems to be positioned correctly there. So I'm gonna put that nut back on and not necessarily tight it, tighten it quite yet, but make sure that it at least puts the tension on the bracket. In case I need to reposition it at all. Okay. And like I said, the lubrication of the O-rings has already been accomplished. So I'm going to do the one that's nearest, the shortest one here basically, and that's the bigger hose. So with that lubricated, this should just simply snap on and go over that uh, retention ring in the tubing. And these have already been cleaned before. So let's gently wiggle that on. And you can feel the O-rings kind of slide over that and that should hear a little click. And there's that. So that's on. And I should have the same thing with this one. Wait for the O-rings to go over the tubing. I felt that there. And then should be a little click. And those are now on. So this appears to be positioned correctly at this point. And now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the nut on the shock mount. And that's in place. Let's make sure this one's tight as well. Yes. And I should be able to put the two clamps in place on the front here. So 
So I don't forget to do that. Get past the sealant portion of the nipple, and that's in place. Get it standing up with hose on both sides of it, but past the ridge in the nipple. Okay, those are in place. Now the uh, tank should be able to be put in place. I'm going to clean some of the goo off of here. Get uh, the new Dorman Surge tank in place. We're not going to reuse this old cap. We're going to use the one that came with it. I'm going to cut off the little Dorman tag here. I'm going to remove the tape that's holding that rubber grommet foot in place. So the rubber foot's in place, and with all the tape off finally it was a little hard to get off for some reason. And we've got the mounting point in the front, which we have the bolt for. And then we have the clip over here that needs to go into this bracket here. So let's flip this up for the moment, or see if we can tip it under, there we go. And we have the hose. All right, let's get our 10 millimeter headed bolt. Put that back in place. And make sure we're fully engaged up here. Sitting on the foot up there. All right. Okay, that's in place. I'll have to deal with that in a little bit. I don't want to delay too much on that. All right, this is a brand new plastic fitting. So we're going to put the connection from the heater hose section over that. It's fully over that nipple. And now I'm going to get the clamp put it in place. I need to move that clamp position. I need to turn it, rotate it 90 degrees. That's all the way on to the tank nipple. And now I should be able to grab this more easily. Wiggle this on here. Pass the bulge in the nipple for sealing. Let go. Okay. This is the new cap, new o-ring and everything. Next, we're going to, again, the front one go, of these upper nipples goes to the hose from the radiator. And the other one here, which I have tied around the leg of the camera, sorry. And those are back in place. So I'm gonna squeeze these to get them on. Do the same for this one. Okay. Next, we're going to move over to the thermostat housing. We have some gasket material to remove. I'm going to get a plastic razor blade to clean that material off. Let's remove the bolts. And the housing, 
mounting. I'm going to put a little brake part cleaner on there to try to dissolve some of that. Next I'm going to use a plastic, again this is plastic not metal, I'm going to see if I can use that to scrape off the remnants of the previous gasket. Stuff something in here just so we don't get anything in. I'm going to put the new housing in place. Old original thermostat style with the holes in it and the new style here. I've cleaned as it's a very smooth surface. Uh, down there. I'm going to clean the nipple on the radiator side and I'm going to install the hose at least without the clamp on it. That's to prepare for everything down there. I'm also going to spray a little bit of uh, detailing spray in here to act as a temporary lubricant. Rubbing on quite nicely. And I'm going to do the same up here on the nipple side and then we can move it around and put the clamps in place. So let's make sure we get that clamp on there. Installed to get a little more stability in here. And I can push that on all the way. It's on there. Spray a little more of this detailing spray here. And try to wiggle this on all the way. See if I can do the quick release. Because it's on the tab here, so we need to get beyond the ridge here. And that's in the proper position right there. And we're going to do the same to the one down on the actual radiator side. Just pulling that pin that's holding the tension underneath the, the clip part and it puts it on there. I may need to move that just a hair on the bottom side. So let's do that. Okay, let me uh, work on that. I have to move the camera to get in there, so I'll do that off camera. We now have the lower radiator hose in place and the clamps are in place as well. So I'm going to put the upper radiator hose in place. I just need to clean the upper portion here on both the uh, on both the water pump side and the radiator side just to make sure that it's clean. And we'll be cleaning the pulleys here. There's some coolant that got into the groove so we don't want that getting into the belts. I'm going to take a look at over on this side just to make sure I'm not missing anything here. This uh, hose nipple off the radiator looks Good. No cracking. I'm not going to put the upper radiator hose. I already tested the length. I have the clamp over here that goes on the water pump side in its uh, open position. The one on the radiator is not holding that position, so I have to have the pliers on it for the moment. I'm going to spray and put some fluid uh, of this detailing spray to lubricate the hose on each end to make it a little easier to go on. This dries off nicely. So, let's position the hose on the radiator side first. All the way on there, and I am. I'm not going to put the clamp on yet. 
And before this fully dries, we're going to get the hose on this side, on the water pump side. That went on nice and easy. So now I'm going to put, well, since we have the pliers over here, let's uh, put this clamp in place. So I'm going to wiggle this down into position. Let's make sure we're beyond. It needs to go forward just a hair. That's on. And now let's get this one in place. We'll release the tension on it. One that's in place. Looks like it's ready to release. So I need to adjust that just to here. Pulling on the hose. And nice and tight, nice and tight. We now have all the hoses back in place. The surge tank is in line, everything's there. Don't have the cap on yet because we're gonna use the vacuum fill and vacuum testing, leak testing tool in a little bit. And I'm gonna clean off these pulleys down here just to make sure we don't contaminate the dry belt with uh, any coolant that was dropped down. And at this point, since we have the full set of hoses in place, we should be able to perform the leak test. I do need to run my compressor to get air into the tank. So I'll turn off the cameras, get the compressor ready, and then we'll get ready to do the vacuum leak test and see how it goes. I'm now gonna apply compressor air to the leak detection tool or vacuum generation tool for the cooling system. I've closed the drain plug for the bottom of the radiator. All the hoses are in place. We should hopefully have a leak-free system. The compressor may run during this exercise. I've set it to 90 PSI per the tool's requirements. And I've got the tube pointing down to the drainage uh, pan in case anything comes out, which it shouldn't, but uh, just in case. And we want to get it to the 25 to 30 range. It will stabilize at some point. Hold it at 25. We seem to be holding at 25 inches of merc mercury for the vacuum reading. I'm gonna let that set for a minute or two, so I'll come back in just a minute with the camera once we've determined if we have a leak or not. As we can tell here, it's still holding at 25 inches of mercury in the vacuum. So this is after five minutes, so no leaks are present in the system, as determined by this test. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out the connector here, or the one that goes into the tank. And I'm gonna turn this off. and connect it. And I'm gonna put a rag below that just in case it dribbles or whatever. Hopefully that won't be the case, just in case. And I've got four gallons, two gallons distilled, two gallons of AC Delco Dexcool coolant mixed up here. So let's get this into the bottom of that. Bottom of that container. We'll monitor that as we go along here. So I'm going to apply the vacuum and turn this on. This should quickly fill the tanks or the, the whole system. We'll see how long it actually takes.
And the hose up here on the upper radiator hose is collapsed, as is the lower one. Looks like we pulled in almost two gallons. We should start seeing those hose relaxing at some point here. And there we go on the upper hose. And the lower hose looks like it has expanded. This has still got a little bit of collapse to it, but it's pretty much out to normal shape. And once you get below five inches, I've been reading that uh, it tends to be challenging to get uh, more into the system. And it looks like the tank is actually full. So I'm gonna make sure we're not pouring fluid out anywhere. I don't see it. Everything looks good so far. So I'm going to let that sit for just a minute more in case there's any more being uh, percolated out, any more air bubbles or anything, but it looks good so far. It doesn't look like it's uh, going down or the mercury or sorry vacuum reading is staying about the same so i think i'm going to call it out at that point tank is full and i can clearly see that now with the new dormant tank in place so i'm going to turn this off turn this off and release this which should let that fluid go back down into the tank. Open that up and let's drain back into the tank. Let's go ahead and try to release all the vacuum here. Okay. And it's just below the very tippy top here of the uh, tank. So I'm um, all right. And now I'm going to release this from the top of the tank. And I'm going to rinse these uh, fittings out and the whole test tool out with distilled water. And there we go. Now that is above the cold line, so I'm going to get everything put back together on the front here of the engine. And I'm going to start it up and see if that percolates down. If it doesn't, then I'll have to suck a little bit out because it may be a little bit over full because it's above the cold line on the front of the tank. So let me get the dry belt, dry belts back on, and the uh, air intake part with the hose on top of the uh, shelf on that, and then we'll get ready to start the vehicle. And let me put the cap on, at least for now sitting here so I don't forget that. I have the coolant system at a level where it says full cold right now. I decided to just start as that with the starting point. I've got all the dry belts in place. I have the air box back in place. The radiator hose is sitting on top of the shelf on the back of the air box uh, plastic. I have the mass airflow sensor reconnected. The dipstick is back in place because I took that out earlier for the heater core hoses. Uh, we have, I don't have the cap on, I want to start it up and see if there's any amount of air coming out. I don't want to trap it in the system, but uh, let's uh, start it up and see what the fluid level does. down just a hair. Dry belts are on like they should be. And we'll get the heater, kind of turn the heater on to heat. I mean, there's no valve in the system to stop it. I just want to make sure we're getting heat through the heater core. I can see 
fluid going through the hose here. I'm going to put the cap on just at this point to make it a pressurized system. Okay, we'll run it. Um, may not be a full time in the real time in the video, but we'll run it up to operating temperature at idle here. Make sure we're getting heat out of the vents and make sure we get a pressurized uh, hose system here. And then check for leaks and then do it, take it on a test drive. Took the vehicle out on a 13 mile test drive on my standard test loop. And temperature stayed in normal range like it should. No spiking. It looks like it did decrease the coolant level just a little bit. The hoses are at pressure at this point and hot, so I'm gonna leave everything in that state and let it cool down before I open that up, of course. You don't wanna open that up hot. And then I'll adjust the coolant level, but it's just, it's right in the seam here. So it's it went down just a small amount. And I measured the coolant that I extracted and the amount that was pulled back in, and they're equal to each other. So. The vacuum system seems to be working like it should. It found no leaks, I'm not finding any leaks. But otherwise, it seems to be working and I can definitely enjoy seeing the coolant level in that uh, tank without having to put a flashlight behind it because I would have to do something like this and you couldn't even see it all that well in the AC Delco version of the tank. So, very happy with that. And tomorrow I'll do another, like I said, top off, another test drive and I'll put the engine cover on and call it a job well done. Overall, this took a couple hours to complete. It's filming added some time to that as well. But the new products I tried out, including this airlift tool to vacuum check the system and fill the system was a great find for my garage. And hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos to the channel. And please come to the channel again for other SSR related videos. Thanks for watching.